back to the channel. In this vlog, we move on after two days rest at Camping Gavin in the Midi Pyrenees of Spain to explore the forgotten village of Esco. After another full day of what felt like proper exploring, we end up at another completely unplanned and very unique stopover. Two nights at Camping Gavin. What do you think? Spot on. It was just what we needed after several days constantly moving. It had a lovely pool, nice and chilled. So we uh, had just over 24 hours recharging the batteries, literally. Uh, could be had electric cook up as well. And the aircon was on. That was an absolute saviour because it's been hot, hot, hot. So um, just what we needed. So now we're back on the road, back out exploring. So today we're heading off to a reservoir. Uh, we're heading from east to west across the top of northern Spain. And we're going to check out this reservoir. There's Ricky spotted on the map. We don't know anything about it. Uh, but I've also seen that there's a, a an abandoned village not far away as well. So we're going to check that out too. So we'll pick you up uh, when we get back. Hopefully. See you when we get there. So we're here at the Yesa Reservoir this afternoon and the reservoir was opened in 1960 and it was formed by damming the River Aragon um, and basically quite a few little villages were flooded in the, the process of this. The lake is about 18 kilometres long depending on the height of the water of course. Uh, not going to walk that today but we will go and look at one of the abandoned villages because you can actually see it. It's, it's still actually quite far above the water level. Um, so we're going to go and have a little round and see what we can see. I'm not sure if this is a warning sign. years of being inhabited, the people of Esco and two other villages had to leave their homes after their agricultural lands were submerged in water following the building of the Yesa Dam. road up to the village narrows it's really only accessible on foot now absolutely roasting not a cloud in the sky and we're in this abandoned village this is amazing it would have been so so interesting what a great location as well Some signs of vaguely recent life. Don't think anyone's seen a caravan like that for a number of years. But definitely some vehicles over there that have been here very recently. Here's Beth's caravan. And there is a new road that's now going to run right around the back of this village. How bizarre. I don't know if you can hear that. That's a radio. 
So after realising that the village was not, in fact, abandoned, I did a bit more research and found out that there are about three or four people that still live in Esco to tend their sheep. So I'm not quite sure if this was a, a church. There we go. It's hard to tell because there's not a lot left, but a heck of a view across the valley. Right, reporting live from under an umbrella whilst it's about 38 degrees there's not a cloud in the sky i'm not having that anyway this is quite an interesting place isn't it yes um somewhat spoiled a little bit by the motorways being built around the back wasn't expecting that no um but very very interesting it is absolutely roasting um so we head back to the van now yeah well the reason it's roasting is yeah. because it's like half past 12 in the afternoon in Spain in June and only mad dogs in English come out of the midday sun you know what you need in this situation an umbrella shade no a coffee oh. back to the van and then I as a special treat am going to allow Dora to buy me a coffee <laughs> what a lucky lady what a time to be alive eh? reservoir is also known as the Sea of the Pyrenees. The dam is located in the north and is 75 metres high and 400 metres long. People use the reservoir for water sports, fishing and hiking and apparently if the water level drops low enough you can see the old Roman baths just for a few weeks of the year. We were going to go to a nice little patisserie and get some coffee, but we ended up here because Ricky wanted McDonald's. But I am very excited because I've got cheese and bacon chips and I've got a gluten-free bun as well. Are you happy with yours? Yeah, I don't even care. I'm not even sorry. No, you're not sorry. No, you should not. be. First McDonald's has been away. I've got a coffee. We're on route. We don't really want to stop and waste any time. What more can you want? Yeah, and you have got something we don't have in the UK. You've got a chicken cheeseburger thing or something. That's nice, right. I'm happy with that. There you go. Right, let's get on. Uh, 
drive around San Sebastian, but it was really busy. So we decided to pick somewhere a little bit more peaceful, just outside the city. And it was somewhere quite quirky too. Right, so we've arrived at tonight's park up, which you may be able to tell from those cylinders, is a, uh, a cider plantation. I don't know, if, are they called plantations? Anyway, where they make cider. So we've got the van over there, look, virtually no one else here. I believe this is a worker's car, so we're gonna be on our own by the looks of it. But this place looks amazing. Uh, let me have a quick look around. It's actually closed. The restaurant's closed tonight, which is unfortunate. But, nevertheless, it does look amazing. 500 years ago, a man called Petri had a house and farm built on the site, all based around the cider press in the main farmhouse. The cider making business has been run by several different families over the last half century. But the cider house is currently run by the fifth generation of the Artagno family. There are three restaurants and lots of different experiences you can do here, including visiting the cellars. To park in their two motorhome parking bays is completely free but you do need tokens for the water and waste facility and these were unfortunately out of order when we visited. We had a pretty hot and sticky night in the car park with just our 12 volt fans to keep us cool. However, we woke up the next morning bright and early, ready to set off and head to France. Join us next time where we head for the seaside, we find a windmill and we cool down on the water slides.